Hi, I'm going to show you how to add an event on the Donovan County um, event calendar. So this is a great way for county residents to keep in connection with what's going on over the entire county. It's a free calendar that anyone can add an event to um, managed by Donovan County. So the website, um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you can see the website. And I will show you how to log in and how to add and edit an event. Okay, so the Donovan County website is at dpcountyks.com. And on the website, we've got government, residents, business, but the calendar is what we're looking at. So if you click on the calendar page, you'll see that it feeds in events, um, and you can tag it with business, community, um, events as, as a resident. You can do that. And of course, Johnson County um, administrators can manage the government tab. Um, so your event would just load in here, and people can come in here and see what's going on. So what we're going to do is click on Add an Event. And it's going to ask us to log in. So I'm going to log in as a resident. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so I just logged in. If you do not have an account, then you can do on that same page. You can create an account. Um, it will send you an email, verify your email, and then you can log in, like a typical um, uh, password process. So once you're logged in, if you click on that Add an Event, it takes you right to your event page. Now you can also come back later and not log in right to the event page by clicking on login at the bottom of the website. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and log out. So click log out. So I'm going to log out. So now we're back to the home page again. So instead of going to the calendar page, a second way to log in is to scroll down and click on log in. It takes us to the same page. So here's where you can say don't have an account an account. So I'm going to log in again. This time, since I'm going from um, the main login page, it's going to take me to my account dashboard. So you can see events. You can add and view your events, and you can also see your profile in case you want to go and change your username or password or email address. Okay, so under events, let's say we wanted to add an event. It would come here. Um, you could see if you have any events already created. It would show those here. If you have events that you've created and not published, you could click View Unpublished Events, and you could see those as well. But let's click into that. So to click on Add an Event, we're going to get back to the Create an Event screen. Okay. So you're going to add your title, um, and this is a pretty important part. Um, I just picked something in my drop down um, because people will see that as they come through. Probably the two most important things are your picture and your title. So first of all, we'll put our title in, and then we're going to work on our events, our dates and times. So there's tips as you go down through the page, but a big thing to remember is if you have a multi-day event, you want to make sure that unless it's a round-the-clock event, that you actually put each date and those day and times for that event in. So if you have an event that starts on Monday and it's from 8 to 5, on Tuesday it's 9 to 4, and on Wednesday it finally ends at 1 in the afternoon, you need to put each of those days in separately because it does have an end time on that, on that um, date. But if you have an ongoing, say, registration process, that's, they could register at any time online, and it starts on Monday at 9 a.m., and it ends you know, five days later on Friday at 4 p.m., and it's around the clock, then you can do um, start date of that date and the end date of the four days later. So typically what you're going to do is have your start date and the end date the same day and go back and do additional days if you need to. So that's probably the only trick to remember on this. So um, let's say we wanted the start date on Saturday of 8 a.m. And we're going to end on Saturday at 5 p.m. We'll say we'll end at Saturday at 2 p.m. Okay? Or you can do, I don't know when it's going to end. I just know it's going to start at 8. So let's do that. Okay? And then here... For the tag, um, you want to do either business or community, um, or this is the event type. So if it's a business event specifically and it's really geared towards business, go ahead and click that. Um, otherwise, you can click community, and it's just for the entire community. So those are two kind of um, differences there. And then you have tags. So tags can be, you have multiple tags, and there's two important, there's one important tag that you need to make sure you pick, and that is your city tag. 
So if you pick the right city tag, underneath your city pages on the county, you have a special city calendar, and you'll see just the events in your city. So if I pick Bendina, then um, it will show under the Bendina calendar. Now some things are countywide, and so it's not something that um, is a specific city, or sometimes I'll see um, event planners will go ahead and pick all the cities, and so it will show up on every city's individual calendar as well as the overall calendar. So that's a little trick. And then you can come through and um, pick things that might apply. So if it's a food event, if it's Christmas, a breakfast, agriculture. And if there's a tag that you're like, this would be really helpful to have, but we don't have it, you can um, get in contact with the Johnson County um, Economic Development Director, um, and they can help you get a new tag added, and, and that can be helpful to the entire community. And then you're gonna come down to location. So for location, you're gonna select, this is really handy because you can save locations and reuse them. So there are some locations that are already in here that are kind of saved as global locations. Um, so you can kind of go and see if there's one already in here that you can use. Um, and a lot of them are kind of public places. So if you have um, something that would be a church or um, a, a garage sale at a house and you want to list that, you can do create location if you don't want to pick one of these locations. So you create location and you'll type in the name of the location, say the name of the church, um, and then the category is just default. You'll put in your address here. You don't really have to do a whole lot more than the address. If you don't have a website URL, that's okay. Um, if you have an image, you can go all the way into here, but really you just need the address, okay? And you do save and close, but one important thing is if you come down here, this common, if you click no, that means only you can access and use that location. So if it's your house or a garage sale, you don't want people scheduling parties at your house. You don't want to have a common location that people could plan parties at. Don't click the common. But if there's something in there that you think would be helpful, it's not in those that list that you can pick from and you think it's a public place that we need to have in there, scroll down and hit that common to be yes. And that will mean that other people could um, you've helped other people out by go ahead and putting the address in for this location and finding it on the map and, and help them do that. So we're just going to go ahead and pick a location. Okay, and then the details. These are the event contact details, name and, and email address. Not required fields, um, but helpful. Okay, and then here's your description. So we just um, recommend if you could have at least 160 character description, which is kind of like an old school tweet. Um, that really does help, um, and it helps search engines pick it up. It helps people understand what your event is about. So you can add that here. I think I'm just going to copy text and put that in there. If I can. Okay, it's not going to let me copy. Okay, and we're almost done here. So the event image, this is actually a required field. So we do have that here. Um, and it just really does help the calendar look better. Even if you just use a default image, if you wanna do um, an event type over and over, you can use that same image. And it does say here that it will take a PNG, a JPEG, or a GIF file, which, um, and PDFs are not considered an image. If you have a PDF flyer, not a problem. That doesn't go in this spot, that goes down here as an attachment, of a form, a flyer, or a document. So right here is going to be your image. So I'm gonna choose file, and the best is gonna be a 600 by 400, which is gonna be a horizontal picture, um, a typical horizontal picture. So if you don't have that exact size, you can go to pickresize.com. I like that one, that one's really easy. Pickresize.com. and you can find your picture from the computer, browse, edit it down to be a 600 by 400 and um, save to your computer. So that's a really easy way to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and um, go to pictures.
Okay, so I'm gonna open up a picture here and don't keep going, you have to click upload. Since it's a kind of a long form, we wanna make sure that everything's set before you save so you can see the image that you've got. And then I'm gonna go ahead and choose a, um, a PDF here. Um, to upload and show how that works. See, I think I've got some flyers. Okay, so I'm gonna choose, um, I chose a PDF, I'm gonna click upload. It's uploading, it does say it's an image, but it'll upload that. Okay, you can see here that it's got um, that in there. And you can actually change um, the title right here. So if I wanted to do, it'll do that. Okay, and then if we weren't ready, we could do unpublished, and it would save it into a, that unpublished area that I showed you before. But I'm gonna go ahead and say published to let you see how that works. And if we do save, it will leave it up so we can continue making edits or save and close would close out of this and take us back to our account. I'm gonna click save in case we wanna make any changes. Okay, so now it's, okay, how do I go find my event? Do you, I'm gonna hold down control and I'm gonna to go to calendar and I'm going to see the community calendar. And we can see here, I called it a Wagner's Carnival and we have a football picture. You can see here that it automatically loaded in underneath all events, and as well, it came underneath community. So if someone looked at community events, but it won't be under business because we didn't tag it as business, as a business site. We click on it. You'll see our description here. We've got our flyer that's linked here. Um, the location information loaded in automatically because we picked Joaquina City Hall. There's going to be a carnival at Joaquina City Hall with football players. I, we left the contact information blank, so there's nothing here. Um, and so that's how that works. Now, if you see here, once we're on this page, because you're the event owner, you do have a little edit box here. So you could actually come back and edit it from this section. So I could click edit, I could do um, edit uh, the event, and it takes us back to this. Or you can, we have this open another window, we can go ahead and edit here. So to go back to edit the event. So just to refresh, once your event is published, you can go to the event on the website, click on the little edit button and edit that there. Um, if you would like to, you can go and log into your dashboard. Once you log in, you go to events and you can see your published events and you can click on the link there. It's going to take you to the page that you click on the little edit button there. And the last thing is if you do have, so let's click on this and let's make it unpublished. So if we make it unpublished, click unpublish event, that means, oops, we made a mistake, we don't really want that published yet, but now how do we get back to that event? So we go back to our dashboard and we're gonna go to events and we're gonna say view unpublished events and we're gonna see the unpublished event. So when we click on that, now we can click this link here. We could either publish it, which is nice and easy, once we're ready, or we can just go ahead and edit. So this one is kind of cool. Let's say at the very beginning of this um, video, I was talking about if you have multiple day events. So once you've got your first day set up, you can come in here and say copy and edit event. This will copy it to a, um, so this is editing a copy of an event. So you can have the same title. It gives us gives it a new database um, backend number, so you can have the same title. So what we're going to do is we could actually duplicate the same exact event on the same exact day. But we're going to change it to um, a different day. We'll do it on the 20th, and we'll go ahead and make it give it an end time of noon. And so maybe for this one. Um, you know, maybe there's no food at that one. Um, and you could change out the description on this copy, but everything else kind of already stays there. So if we do, and I'm gonna change it to published, just save and close. So now if I go to my calendar, it's gonna show a couple. It's gonna show the one on Monday, which we just added, 
oops, I accidentally put it in the wrong category. No, I didn't. Okay, it's only shown the Monday because remember we unpublished the Saturday one. So we'd have to go back in to our events. So we have one published. Publish. So we're going to publish event. Okay. So now we're going to go to dashboard. So now we have two events. We have a Saturday event and we have a Monday event. So if we come here, we should have a Saturday and Monday that's published. Perfect. We have a Saturday event and a Monday event. So we, I showed you how to unpublish and to publish it um, and how to add multiple days. Okay, that is how to edit, to add an event on the community calendar, how to edit an event. And um, the last thing, um, let's say that you don't want that on, on here, and we're going to go and unpublish that or delete that event because I mean, we don't want a carnival at City Hall. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to do delete events. Okay, and you can only delete your own events, which is handy. Okay, so I'm going to go here and delete them. All right, there will not be a carnival at City Hall. All right, so um, there's how to manage community events. So I'm looking forward to seeing lots of great things happening in Donovan County this year.